Welcome to this introduction to chapter 14 in the book Macroeconomics. This chapter is about the open economy in the short run. And this chapter completes the analysis of our macroeconomic model. And it is focusing on the role of economic policy in the open economy in the short run. And it also lays the theoretical foundation for chapter 15, which is an applied chapter discussing the experiences with alternative exchange rate systems and monetary union. Because it will turn out that the exchange rate system matters very much for how we can conduct economic policy in the open economy. And really the main point of this chapter is to show that the roles of fiscal and monetary policy are fundamentally different depending on whether we have a fixed or a floating exchange rate. So if you have a fixed exchange rate, you really do not have any monetary policy and therefore fiscal policy becomes very important. If you have a floating exchange rate, then monetary policy is very powerful because it affects many different components of aggregate demand and fiscal policy is less powerful. How powerful fiscal policy is depends on the exact assumptions that we make in our analysis. So to analyze the open economy in the short run, we use the same equations as before. We have the goods market equilibrium condition, we have the money market equilibrium condition, and we have the interest parity condition. And now in the short run analysis, we take the price level at home and abroad as given. So P and P star are exogenous, contrary to the long run where those were endogenous. And that means that production is endogenously determined. In the short run, production is determined by demand, which consists of consumption, investment, government demand, and net exports. And since we have three equations, we must have three endogenous variables. So what are the other endogenous variables? Well, that will depend on the exchange rate system. If we have a credibly fixed exchange rate, then E and EE are exogenously given. And then the interest parity condition says that the interest rate has to be the same as abroad. And that will mean that the central bank loses control over the money supply, so M is endogenous. So in these three equations with a fixed exchange rate, the endogenous variables are going to be Y, I, and M. If you instead have a floating exchange rate, then the central bank can set either the money supply or the interest rate. And then you can view the interest parity condition as an equation determining the exchange rate endogenously. So with a floating exchange rate, the endogenous variables are Y and E, and then either M or I. So that is summarized here. And this is a kind of mathematical explanation. Let's think more about the economics of this. So let us consider first a fixed exchange rate. So how does the central bank maintain a fixed exchange rate? Well, they do that by operations in the currency market. So a fixed exchange rate means that the central bank announces an official target value for the currency and then the central bank buys and sells domestic currency so as to keep the exchange rate very close to that announced value called the central parity. And if we then look at the interest parity condition and we fix the exchange rate, we see immediately that that says that the interest rate has to be the same as abroad, provided it's a credibly fixed exchange rate, so it's not expected to change in the future. And this means that the central bank will not have any control of the interest rate or the money supply, but the money supply will be endogenously determined by the demand for money. And intuitively this is because 
if you fix the value of your currency in terms of the currency of the rest of the world, and then you set an interest rate, for example, below the world interest rate, then you're offering the speculators a free lunch or a million free lunches because then they can just borrow in your small open economy and then lend abroad and make infinite amounts of money. So that's just not possible. So therefore you have to set the same interest rate as abroad and we can then substitute I star for I in the IS equation and then really we only need to look at the IS equation to determine the level of production in the economy. And we can then assume some consumption functions, some tax functions, some import functions, and we can then study the effects of fiscal policy. This is the multiplier that you get for an increase in government consumption or investment where tau is the marginal tax rate, C1 is the marginal propensity to consume, and Q is the marginal propensity to import. And here we see that the multiplier effect of fiscal policy in the open economy, it is going to be smaller than in the closed economy, because Q is a positive number that appears in the denominator of the multiplier. This is because as consumers increase their consumption, they will spend some of that money on imports. So some of this increase in demand that follows from an expansionary fiscal policy, some of that increase in demand will leak abroad. So the multiplier effect is smaller compared to the closed economy. On the other hand, there's not going to be any crowding out of investments because the interest rate is fixed abroad and therefore as production increases, there will not be any central bank raising the interest rate and there will not be any crowding out of investment. And in that sense, fiscal policy is going to be quite powerful and play an important role when we have a fixed exchange rate. So with a fixed exchange rate, fiscal policy is important and you do not have any monetary policy except the possibility to change the value of the currency, which I have not discussed, but that is called a devaluation or a revaluation. But aside from that, you do not have any monetary policy of your own when you fix the exchange rate. So let us turn to a floating exchange rate. A pure floating exchange rate means that you do not have any target value for the currency and that the central bank does not intervene in the currency market. So the central bank is free to set the interest rate or the money supply, and we can view the interest parity condition as an equation determining the exchange rate. And we see here that if you raise the interest rate, this is going to raise the value of the currency because it becomes more attractive to buy the currency and lend in the currency of the small open economy if the interest rate is higher. And therefore, the interest rate has a positive effect on the exchange rate for given foreign interest rate in given expected future exchange rate. And here we have rewritten the model where we have written the interest parity condition as an equation determining the exchange rate. Now, for graphical analysis, it's useful to substitute the expression for the exchange rate into the IS equation. So we substitute for E there, and then we get what we call the IS star equation. So the difference here is that we have now substituted here the expression for the exchange rate. And now we see that the interest rate appears in several places. It's here, it affects consumption. It's here, it affects investment, and it's here, it affects the exchange rate and thereby net exports. So the interest rate has direct effects on domestic demand because it affects consumption and investment, but it also works through what we can call the exchange rate channel. That as you raise the interest rate, the value of your currency increases and that will reduce net exports. So you see that monetary policy is quite powerful, affecting all the components of aggregate demand except government expenditure. So we can illustrate this using the ISLM 
diagram where we have the IS curve drawn for a given exchange rate and then we can draw the IS star curve which was this equation here which includes the effect of the interest rate on the exchange rate and that IS star curve is then going to be flatter because now the interest rate has a stronger effect on aggregate demand when you take account of the exchange rate channel and on the left here we have illustrated the interest parity condition. So here on the horizontal axis we have the exchange rate and here we vertical axis the interest rate and if you raise the interest rate that will increase the value of your currency. That is what the interest parity condition says. So this illustrates our model of the open economy in the short run. So what determines the slope of the IS star curve? Well that is of course, how the interest rate affects consumption, how the interest rate affects investment, and also the effect of the interest rate on the exchange rate and thereby on net exports. And in this analysis so far, we have implicitly assumed that the expected future exchange rate is constant. Now, it may be quite realistic that if you raise the interest rate and the currency appreciates, that also affects the expected future value of the currency. So an in increase in the interest rate could raise the expected future value of the exchange rate. If that is the case, then that will reinforce the effect through the exchange rate channel. It will make the effect of the interest rate on net exports even stronger, and therefore the IS star curve will become more flat. And I've illustrated that here. If the expected future exchange rate also increases, then the IS star curve will be very flat and monetary policy will be very powerful in the sense that a small increase in the interest rate has a very big effect on production. And under certain conditions, the IS star curve can even become completely flat. This is discussed in chapter 14 and also in the appendix to, to the chapter. Okay, so now we can illustrate the equilibrium. Here we draw the, the LM curve for a given money supply. And we see how the level of production, the interest rate and the exchange rate are determined. We can also look at uh, expansionary monetary policy that increases money supply and pushes down the interest rate. And we see that it also leads to a depreciation of the currency and an increase in production. So that is monetary policy. What about fiscal policy? Well, compared to the case of a fixed exchange rate, the effect of fiscal policy on production is going to be smaller because now we are going to have crowding out of investments and exports. And I illustrate that here. As usual, the fiscal policy shifts out the IS curve but then in the background you have the central bank that will react by raising the interest rate and if the IS star curve is very flat then that increase in the interest rate will counteract much of the effect of fiscal policy. So there will be typically crowding out of both investment and exports but of course that depends on what the central bank does. It depends on whether the central bank raises the interest rate or not. And it also depends on how exchange rate expectations are formed because under certain conditions you could have a completely flat IS star curve and then fiscal policy will be completely ineffective. Now that case, I view that as a fairly extreme case. Typically the evidence shows that fiscal policy does matter. Consider, for example, the United States. The U.S. has had a flexible exchange rate for a long time, and the evidence that was reviewed in Chapter 11 suggests that fiscal policy does affect the economy in the U.S. So I think it's reasonable to say that fiscal policy does affect the economy also when you have a floating exchange rate, but it's less powerful compared to when you have a fixed exchange rate. So here is a summary of the effect of monetary and fiscal policy with a fixed exchange rate and with a floating exchange rate.
We can also relate this analysis to the analysis of the long run that we had in the previous chapter, in chapter 13. So in that chapter we used this graph where you have the net exports on the horizontal axis and the real exchange rate on the vertical axis. And then we said that for production to be on the natural level, then net exports have to be equal to what you produce minus what you use yourself for consumption, investment, and government demand. So that determines then the natural level of the real exchange rate. And this is initially here E1. Now suppose that consumers become more uh, worried about the future, so they consume less. Well, that will reduce consumption, and that means that there will be more goods to export. So you need to increase the exports, and the real exchange rate has to depreciate. So that's what the long-run analysis said, that if there's a fall in domestic consumption, you need a real depreciation. Now, how does that happen? How is this adjustment achieved? Well, that will depend on the exchange rate system. And that is discussed in the book, how this happens, because the adjustment will be quite different depending on whether you have a fixed or a floating exchange rate. Okay, so good luck with your studies of stabilization policy in the open economy.